During the Vietnam War, Vung Tau was a popular beachside recreation destination for soldiers. It was also the logistics base for the Australian Task Force, which had its operational combat base at Nui Dat. Located some 30 kilometers away, Nui Dat was closer to the center of what was then Phuc Thuy Province. Tours from Bung Tau to Nui Dat need to be booked in advance. We didn't, so we had to take a local motorbike driver off the street. We paid 400,000 dong for around four hours. The Vung Tau Airport was used by US and Australian forces during the war. Today it's mainly used by helicopters providing services for the offshore oil wells. The dominating view from Vung Tau to Nui Dat is of the Nui Dok Tin Mountains, or what was known as Warburton Mountains during the war. Along the way, we passed through the town of Long Phok. In June 1966, it was within the Nui Dat 4 km exclusion zone, known then as Line Alpha. During the war, it was a village with a population of 3,000 which had been infiltrated by the Viet Cong, and an extensive tunnel system was located here. Thus, very early after the establishment of the Australian base, its inhabitants were relocated, and all buildings were razed and tunnels destroyed. Remnants of these tunnels can still be visited today. All of these areas were hostile for the Australians. Just a kilometer down the road on the 21st June 1966, an elaborate ambush was set up by the Viet Cong. Corporal Leon Brown, of the Australian Army Provost Corps, was killed. Up the road, you can see the gravel truck, this is heading towards Nui Dat 2, another small volcanic hill, located just behind the Long Tan Memorial. Over the years, both the old Australian base at Nui Dat, and Nui Dat 2, are being carted away as road gravel. In this part of Vietnam, there has always been a shortage of road gravel. The quarrying of the small hill at Nui Dat, was actually started by the Australians, soon after the initial construction of the base in June 1966. In August 1966, at the time of the Battle of Long Tan, these roads were no more than bullet cart tracks. We just reversed back to the corner, to point out that it was a couple hundred meters down the road on the right, that the 6th Battalion first engaged a small group of Viet Cong soldiers walking north, Sergeant Bob Buick, shot one of the VC, and they fled, 
temporarily taking shelter in a hut, which was located on the left, just down the Long Tan Memorial Road. The Australians pursued the VC soldiers until they come under heavy fire from within the rubber plantation and from the Nui Datu Hill. There are several excellent documentaries which details the sequence of the battle. The rubber trees have recently been replanted. This makes the historical reminiscing a little harder to visualize. The economic life of rubber trees and plantations is around 30 years. So possibly, this field has been replanted twice since the battle. This film was taken the next morning, when the Australians re-entered the battlefield, to find two wounded mates and confirm the tragic loss of 18 Australians. Importantly it provides the battle scene, and the mature rubber plantation was no different to what is across the road from the memorial today. We are now on our way, to the old base at Nui Dat, about 4 kilometers to the west. If the labels appear too fast, you can always pause or reverse the video on the YouTube slider control. This road, is in the same position, as the Australian road which ran from Task Force HQ, and Kangapad, through the battalion lines to Luscombe Airfield. The rubber plantation, on the right, all the way to Luscombe Field were the 6th battalion lines in August 1966. From 1966 to 1971, most Australian soldiers coming to Vietnam, would find their way to Nui Dat. It become a sprawling base, with a 12-kilometer barbed wire perimeter. By 1969, it housed 5,000 soldiers mostly in tents, in amongst the shade of the rubber trees. Inside the perimeter, was home, and outside was hostile. Each battalion, would have its own canteen store, helipad, cinema and bar. Snakes were common. It was hot. Food was mostly complained about. The smell of aerial mosquito spraying lingered and the post office mail was most welcomed. The red soil at Nui Dat, was dusty in the dry and become a sticky mud when it rained. Very difficult, to remove from boots, or virtually anything. Here we overlay a 1970 photograph, of Nui Dat over a current Google map. You can see, many of the roads made by the Australians still exist. We are now heading towards Luscombe Field, the old Australian airstrip. Our camera is pointing left, towards the west, on our right is still the rubber plantation, which in 1966, was home to the 6th Battalion. We are now, turning west onto the old Luscombe Field service road, to our right was the Ordnance Area, with the Luscombe Bowl Concert Arena. Note that the Luscombe Field and Concert Bowl was not completed until after the Battle of Long Dan. 
The Kaljoy Little Patty concert, that was performing at the time of Long Tan, was at the other end of Canberra Avenue. The Australian Army 161 Reconnaissance Flight, was located at this end of the Luscombe Airfield. Their most famous aircraft was Bunny 2, a bird dog which was built by members from Bits and Pieces, the fuselage and the Bits and Pieces, which became Bunny 2, were recovered from a graveyard, at Bung Tau. The plane was airborne in August 1971. It is now on display at the Museum of Australian Army Flying, at Oki in Queensland. It was not only the RAF transports that frequented Luscombe Field, frequently stores were dropped off by the U.S. Air Force's C-123 provider. Many veterans would remember the roar of the large twin radial, reciprocating engines. Of course the most endearing sound was that of the Huey Iroquois. The Caribou, of Wallaby Airline, were frequent visitors to New Edad. On the left of Luscombe Field, was the alternate battalion lines. In 1966, the rubber was home to the 5th Battalion. We are now proceeding south, along Highway 2. We are a little unsure, of where to turn to go around to the back of Nui Dat Hill. You can see, that the view of the Nui Dat Hill fronting the Highway 2, is little changed from 50 years ago.
During the war, another ring road, went around the hill, you can see some glimpses, of that road, up on the side of the hill, the road we are on was one of the main entries to the base from the direction Vung Tau. The Australian base at Nui Dat was abandoned on the 7th of November 1971, with the last battalion transferring to Bung Tau. Immediately after the closure, Nui Dat was completely stripped for building materials and scrap. The Vietnamese soldiers even shot down all the overhead electrical wires to recover the copper scrap. On the right of the Nui Dat Hill was a smaller protrusion, which has long been carted away as road base. During the war, the ground was more gradual sloping from the hill. After filming, in 2018 the quarry recommenced operations. Access to this area of the old base is now restricted. We now walk up the top of Nui Dat Hill, for a look to the southwest, and the Nui Dinh Mountains, which are about 10 kilometers away. The Nui Dinhs had never been penetrated before by the French or Americans. The enemy had bases in the rugged jungle. An Australian operation, called Vaucluse, in September 1966 was the first into the area. We have turned the camera around to the east, looking over the old base, note the approximate area of the concert during the Battle of Long Tan, the old lagoon, is just out of sight due to the acacia scrub. Now we are panning towards, the Long Tan Memorial. We will now leave the tour of Nui Dat, and check the location of the Horseshoe Fire Base and the Barrier Minefield. The Horseshoe, is about 8 kilometers southeast of Nui Dat, and no surprise, that today it is a gravel quarry. It was a high feature, that permitted observation over a large area of ground. The barrier minefield, started at its base, and ran from here all the way to the coast, skirting the town of Dat Du. 20,000 jumping jack M16 mines were laid. But the resourceful Viet Cong dug up the mines which were then included in their arsenal against the Australians. Baria, is the capital of the province. During the war, the Australians depended on the busy town for fresh produce, ice and laundry. It was also noted for the attack by North Vietnamese forces, during the Tet Offensive in 1968. During the retaking of the town, the Australians took casualties from a sniper, located on the top of the water tank. The water tank could not be destroyed, due to its necessity of water supply. But the surrounding area received much damage. 